So in the last video, I talked about semiconductor doping. And I said we could, do, we could dope with group three uh, with elements, which have three electrons. Uh, and this introduced a hole, H plus, or group five elements, which have five electrons. And this introduced an extra electron. And let me just draw each of these in my favorite my favorite personal colors. I always think of electrons as being uh, blue and holes as being red, pink, but I don't, I don't have pink here. So this, uh, I, I approached it last time from sort of a high school chemistry perspective, but we're a little more, uh, a little more sophisticated now, and we have our band diagrams. So we've got our conduction band and our valence band, and the remember this these band diagrams just fr come from the energy momentum diagrams with the momentum just kind of compressed uh, and ignored and we only care about the energy and so if we want to introduce dopants uh, what we actually end up doing is remember I said there are no uh, no states in this region no states within the band gap. Uh, but what we do when we add a dopant is we essentially add a state. So we add a state here, we add a state here, we add a bunch of states that are very close to the conduction band and that initially contain an electron. So we've got a bunch of states that each have an electron, and here the electrons are just uh, these little blue circles. And so at temperature of zero degrees Kelvin, um, these electrons actually can't uh, move up to the conduction band. So in these states, uh, they can't actually conduct electricity. And as you start to raise the temperature, so say to T equals uh, one degree Kelvin maybe, maybe some of these electrons can hop up into the conduction band and start conducting electricity, but not too many. Um, as you start to raise the temperature higher and higher, and by the time you get to room temperature, T equals 300 degrees Kelvin, then most, if not all of the, well, most of these electrons have jumped into the conduction band because they have enough just thermal energy from random movement uh, to jump up into the conduction band. And so these electrons are now available to conduct electricity. And similarly, if we dope the semiconductor with, rather than with, uh, a type four, what type five semiconductor or with a group five semiconductor with a group three semiconductor. We've got our conduction band and our valence band. We've got a bunch of empty states here, except they're empty in the sense that they have an extra, they have an extra hole. So they, you can think of them as being devoid of electrons or as containing uh, a bunch of holes. And so at T equals zero Kelvin, uh, these holes have no energy. They have no thermal energy. They cannot move. Um, and then as we start to raise the temperature a little bit, a couple of them are going to start to be able to escape. And then as we get to room temperature, almost all of them have enough energy to escape into the valence band and start conducting electricity. And just to give you a sense of scale, these uh, what are called ionization energies Uh, are typically on the order of like 40 milli EV, which is really tiny. Um, the KT, the thermal energy, is about 26 MeV. Um, so at room temperature, on average, uh, there's there's plenty of energy for these for these donors to be ionized, and the number of ionized donors uh, doesn't just depend on the the ratio of KT and the ionization energy. It depends. Uh, on the quantum mechanics behind it, so on the Fermi-Dirac distribution for these uh, for these donors, but we're not we're not going to analyze that uh, that here. So, if we look at this from a band diagram perspective, we're introducing either additional electrons with their additional accompanying states and additional holes with their accompanying states. And you might say, well, once the electron leaves, uh, say this is now up here, say this is a, an empty state. 
so we've got our, our empty state here, uh, can an electron down here in the valence band jump up into this state uh, and then conduct electricity? Well, yeah, yeah, it, it can. Uh, electrons can jump into these states just as they jump into the conduction band, and then it can just make the little hop here uh, into the conduction band and it can start conducting electricity. So yes, those states are free, uh, they are, they are accept, accessible to the electrons. Um, and same, same with the holes. Now, I've been uh, sort of alluding to this Fermi energy in the equations that we've used. So in the Fermi direct distribution and now in the concentration equations for electrons and holes. And uh, we haven't really talked much about the Fermi energy or how it's affected by doping or uh, what, it really, what it really means. Well, remember uh, last time we derived the equation that the number of electrons is just equal to this constant out front, which is a function of temperature, uh, times e to the minus uh, ec minus ef over kt. And so we would expect that the Fermi energy EF uh, depends on the electron concentration. So if we change the electron concentration through doping, uh, since this equation is always true, uh, then this side has to change. And since NC doesn't depend on anything to do with, with doping, um, it's EF that has to change in this equation. So the Fermi energy gives us, an, or the Fermi level gives us an indicator of uh, which type a semiconductor is. So whether it's N type or it has an excess of electrons or P type has an excess of holes. So if we have an N type semiconductor, um, we've got a bunch of states up here, and I'm assuming that they've donated their electrons now to the conduction band, so we're at a non-zero temperature. Uh, then we would expect the Fermi energy, um, or you can think of it intuitively, like the Fermi energy is kind of dragged up uh, by all of these extra states. Or if you just want to derive it mathematically, you see that, well, if N goes up, uh, then this whole term over here must go up or the Fermi energy must go up since it's a negative of a negative in an exponential. So these dopant states, these group five uh, donor, uh, they're often called donor uh, states because um, the, they're donating an electron, drag this Fermi energy up to the top of the, um, of the band diagram. So we're, we're kind of starting to get a more, more complete band diagram. And this is going to be really useful for analyzing the PN junction, analyzing MOSFETs. Uh, it's going to be an indispensable tool that we really need to get familiar with. So similarly, if we have a semiconductor uh, that we choose to dope with a bunch of donor or a bunch of acceptor states, as they're often called, uh, with a bunch of acceptor atoms, uh, and I'm assuming a non-zero temperature, so we've got now a bunch of extra holes in the valence band, which are available to conduct electricity, then the Fermi energy is going to be dragged down more towards the bottom. So this is a P-type semiconductor. This is an N-type semiconductor. And they're fairly, uh, where the Fermi energy is located is really important, and it's fairly easy to remember if you just remember that, well, a P-type semiconductor, the Fermi energy will be dragged towards the valence band because all these holes are kind of dragging the Fermi energy. Now, that's not a physical um, explanation, but it sort of helps, uh, it's an intuitive way of remembering it. Similarly, these electrons are dragging the Fermi energy up towards the conduction band. So we see that this Fermi energy, EF, kind of give, gives an indicator of the type um, of the silicon. And so we'd expect that at if we didn't add any dopant and we had our conduction band and our valence band, we'd expect the Fermi energy to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, we'd expect the Fermi energy to be like somewhere here. Uh, and this is often called EFI or the intrinsic Fermi level. So the uh, intrinsic refers to the semiconductor, the undoped semiconductor. It's just intrinsic. Um, this, so the Fermi level is at a location EFI, 
And a lot of times, uh, and in most of the future band diagrams I draw, I'll kind of draw this as a dotted line, uh, just to serve as a reference for um, whether, for basically where the midpoint is. And the intrinsic Fermi concentration isn't exactly, or the Fermi level isn't exactly at the midpoint, uh, but it's pretty close. And I'll, I'll go over in a future video where exactly it is. So this intrinsic Fermi level uh, allows us to easily visualize, well, uh, if I've got a Fermi energy near the top above the intrinsic Fermi level, it's definitely an n-type semiconductor. Uh, if I've got a Fermi level near the bottom, uh, below the intrinsic semiconductor, uh, below the intrinsic Fermi energy level, then it's a p-type semiconductor. So this is p-type. Uh, this would be n-type. And so these these band diagrams are starting to become a more more interesting and a more rich way of of predicting things. Uh, and in the future, we're we're going to use them, and along with a couple of rules for uh, for how to use them to predict what happens in things like a PN junction.